hey you guys welcome back to my channel if you're new welcome to my channel as you read by the title today we are going to be talking about how to start an instagram as a crafter or as a tumblr maker or as a small business in general now i've seen so many youtube videos about how to start a youtube as a beauty influencer as a musician as an artist but nobody ever talks about the crafting side of the things the crafting industry we are one of the most underrated industries that is really saturated and that has a lot of people that has a lot of interest but don't know where to get started so i'm gonna bring you guys 10 tips and tricks of how to start an instagram okay and let's be minded that i am doing this too as i'm starting a new instagram for me to be able to broaden my horizon a little bit the username should be something that is your business name if your business name is silly style t-shirts then your username should be silly style t-shirts if nobody else has used that name if it, they have then you might want to do an underscore one or underscore or the official silly style t-shirts but just keep in mind that whatever you choose, you have to make sure it's within Instagram's characters. Instagram has characters for everything, y'all. So you have to make sure that you're within that Instagram character feel for your username. Once you create your username, you want to go to account settings and automatically go ahead and put your Instagram as private. Why do I want to be private if I want people to understand? Because you're just starting off as a Tumblr business or a Tumblr maker or a crafter or a jewelry business or whatever your business might be. So it's important to make sure that you go ahead and put it private. So as you start to build in your Instagram, as we get further down these tips, you have you don't have people trying to follow you and trying to like it and already messing up your algorithm before you even get started. So go ahead and set it to private. Next, we're going to talk about highlights. Highlights are going to be important because it's one of the things that your your audience first see, your people first see when they click onto your profile page after they get that reel or that, that photo that drags into your page. So I recommend at minimum four highlights. The reason why is because when you're on a phone, the first thing you see is the first four highlights. Now, keep in mind, every time you add a new piece of content to your highlight is going to move or shift that highlight to the front so i don't recommend doing highlights that spell out your name like let's say what's the four letter word fact so i wouldn't recommend doing f-a-c-t because if you post something on c the c is going to go before the f so now your thing is going to read c-f-a-t so c fact you don't want that because you want people to understand and know what that highlight is. Don't nobody know what the C is. Nobody, don't nobody know what the F is. Don't nobody know that. So what I recommend is having the four key points. The highlight should be your key points of your business. Time frames. So if you are a custom creator and you have at least three to four week turnaround times, you want to go ahead and put that in there. Um, and then you can start building the rest of those up based off of who you are. You know, if you can't come up with a, a fourth one, you can always do who am I and just create, you know, stuff about you, which brings me to my next thing, how to create highlights. So keep in mind that your stories are not going to be pushed to anybody because you don't have anybody following you. And if you're following somebody else, they're not going to see it because nine times out of 10, they're probably not going to follow you back if you have a private profile or it might be in the requested folder just in case. But I recommend when you first start, don't follow nobody. Just don't even let people know that you have one just yet. So when it comes to these stories, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and create a story. You just simply go and click on the icon button with your icon and then just go ahead and put whatever it is that you want to do in there if it's frequently asked questions go ahead and put that in there then what you want to do is you're going to see three little bars or it may say it at the bottom to add to highlight you're going to simply add it to the correct highlight now once you do that you can delete it because it's already going to be on your highlight or you can leave it up there just to kind of see you know how long it lasts which the story usually lasts for 24 hours to create highlight covers you can go to canva you can go to etsy you can go to um creative fabrica and get these highlight covers i personally like to either go to etsy that and find the edible highlight co covers so that way i can go and t put it to canva and kind of make it my own to make it represent my brand 
Highlight covers should represent your brand, your logo, which we're going to talk about in a minute, or your cover for your profile should also be business logo or whatever your business is or whatever you're on Instagram to do. So if you're a jewelry maker, then you should either have something like with jewelry, like you're looking at jewelry or whatever, or, you know, you focal point in your jewelry, like, you know, whatever the case may be. If you're a tumbler maker, then of course you want to have like, you know, you holding your tumbler or posing with your tumbler or whatever the case may be. Or you could just simply have your name as the logo, like a, a, a actual logo. So it doesn't really matter, but it does have to be matching whatever your business is or whatever it is that you're on Instagram to do. If you are a business, you don't want to have pictures of your family up there as your profile picture because then people aren't going to know if this is... Unless it's a family business, but if it's like a Christmas, random Christmas video that you took with your family, you definitely want to make sure that you have something that's stating that this is a family business. The bio. Your bio is going to be super important. And this is one of the biggest mistakes that a lot of small businesses, crafters, creators, and everybody makes because they don't take it serious. And I know y'all just like, it's a bio. I could put Tony B tumblr maker bam okay what else what what tumblers are you making i mean do you know how many tumblers it is in the world you definitely want to use your bio keep in mind now instagram does have character limits so you definitely if some people use emojis to start off with because emojis can be eye-catching but don't get carried away don't put five heart emojis and then type in what you do because then you're running out and if y'all don't know emojis take like maybe two to three of your characters you have to really be careful with that for example your bio should be seo keywords like custom tumblr maker pink glitter tumblr maker or pink glitter tumblers or custom glitter tumblers or sublimation tumblers or sublimated tumblers or custom jewelry or crystals whatever it is that you do resin art whatever the case may be that's what you want to put in that bio and then you also want to do like a shot with me or connect with me and if you have a website link you can put your website link there i think with the business i, I don't know about personal because i have a business account um which we'll get to that in a few but you can you should be able to do a website link or if not then shave off some of those characters and put in your website link if you have one if you don't have one make sure you put in your bio how people can purchase from you like dm dm to purchase or send an email to purchase because i think you can put your email like an email link um or put your link tree your beacons whatever the case may be so that people know how to find you so that they can buy your product if you don't do dms also put that in there no dms for purchase so that way it kind of forces people to actually go to your website or go to wherever platform etsy whatever and find your product number six so you want to research your content your, your profile is still in private mode private mode is not going to stop you from searching instagram's platform and you want to go on instagram and you want to type in the search bar whatever your niche is you should already have a niche by now but you definitely want to make sure that whatever your niche is you go in and type it in for example if it's custom t-shirts then you want to go in and type in custom t-shirts to kind of see what's out there what's trending what's you know, if you're going to be one of those trendy type people, what's trending, um, if it's seasonal, try to find out what's in season. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just have to go through it and do the research. You got to look at the hashtags, look at the sounds, and that's going to help you get to the point where you can start to be able to plan out your content and get a feel for what it is that you want to do. I highly recommend, and y'all, let me tell y'all, y'all have to follow this strategy. I'm going to do a ebook soon about this strategy because this strategy is very important and crucial to anybody starting off on any social media platform whatever the case may be this is going to be for you so what you want to do is you want to do a 30-day strategy which means that you're going to have about 90 times worth of content huh what yes three times a day that's a 30-day content strategy that you have to have posting three times a day. What does that mean? As a beginner, posting consistently and posting accurately 
and posting multiple times of the day is going to be your best friend to push your content out. Now, the first seven to 14 days are going to be a little bit challenging because you don't have the analytics. You don't have an established audience yet. And Instagram is still trying to figure out, you know, who you are and what it is that you do so that they can post your stuff out. That's why you should also be niche down, which we'll talk about in a later video. But for the purpose of this video, meaning that you want to be as niche down as possible in, within your niche. So that way you can reach a, a audience that's, you know, going to want what you're selling. How do I create 30 days worth of content? Well, if you're just getting started and you are going to be one of those people that are hands on, you can always create stuff if you want to be like a ready to ship only type of person or if you want to create things and then people can personalize it or add names to it then that's content you can use long form content you can introduce yourself introduction videos should always be one of the first videos that you do when you're launching anything so people know who you are launching those is going to be like a quick 30 second video hi i'm tony b I am a customer Tumblr maker. I sell blah, 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 blah. Find me on Instagram at or click the link right here um, or follow for more tips or what's another one? Use my website www.tumblr.com to shop with me. That's always going to be the first one that you do because that's going to be and I'm not saying like a, a picture. The picture is going to come later, y'all. But the reels right now is what's hot in instagram yes you could do carousels and photos and videos on your profile picture but trying to become established you can't really do that right now because you don't have an audience to push it out to or that's gonna faithfully come to your profile to see what you're posting so it's very important to make sure that you do that reel when you first launch so that way people know who you are and they can automatically say, oh, I like her personality or, oh, I like what she's bringing or, oh, I like her demeanor. And then you can go from there and establish who your audience is and they're going to come. Long form videos. Like I said, long form videos, you could do those if you want to show people how to make stuff or, you know, you want to just repurpose content. Now, the only thing with repurposing content, because you can do that, is within the first week, you don't want to repurpose content. 30 days worth of content means you having 30 days worth of content for each of those 30 days, which allows you to create new content for the next following week. If it's like National Hot Dog Day, you could post stuff like that about National Hot Dog Day, but kind of try to figure it out based off of what it is that you make. Like, let's say if it's National Hot Dog Day, I got a hot dog right here in a tumbler. My tumbler is going to be whew, at the good hot dog. I got a tumbler that I could wash it down with. And bam, my tumbler speaks for itself because it's advertising itself. Like, who don't want them to drink after they eat? Hello. People eat stuff like that up, believe it or not, how, no matter how cheesy it is, because people think that, you know, they have to have this stuff to do it, especially if it's a necessary item like a tumbler. You just have to figure out how to create your niche within whatever it is that like National Donut Day or whatever. Put some donuts on top of the tumbler and say milkshake and donuts. OK, don't nobody know what you got in your tumbler unless you show them. I mean, coffee videos. There's so many things you can do. You can make one video. You can use one tumbler or two tumblers and make a ton of videos if you know how to work the system. You also want to make sure that you create content that could be like q a's so like hi i'm tony b i am new to instagram my business is new if you like tumblers please comment below or comment in the comment section what are your favorite tumblers what tumblers do you like like use that you can create posts like polls and stuff like that yeah let me tell you something i started in 2020 in 2020 there was not half as many things as they have now for where beginner template makers there's mock-ups mock-ups will be your best friend they have templates now like in instagram reels because reels wasn't even a thing when i started you could use four or five photos to create a reel of you broadcasting your product now with that being said don't mock up anything that you know you cannot make Mock-ups are more so for like sublimation. It's easier for sublimation tumblers 
or you know printable vinyl tumblers not so not so much of um acrylic snow globes or you know snow globes in general because you have to put something in it and i know a lot of people say well i'm just starting so i ain't want to do all that girl make you one or two or three tumblers and make it work okay make it work do a copy video do a video tell the people why they should you know even if you had to do the face videos tell the people why they should buy from you what makes your stuff different what kind of stuff you sell why you sell it you know all that kind of stuff because people want to know who they're buying from we're not big businesses yet we're small businesses so that small business interaction kind of sets you aside from everybody else now let's move along hashtags so there are a lot of hashtag myths when it comes to what works and what don't work the best advice that i can give you is to just try it for yourself and see what works for you and what doesn't work for you most people say three to five hashtags some people say all 30 hashtags. I say play with it. Your first 7 to 14 days, like I said earlier, are going to be crucial. So you don't know what works for you yet and what doesn't work for you. Like on your first post the, for the first time that day, you can do three hashtags. For your second post, you can do five hashtags. For your third post, you can do four hashtags. Now, when it comes to hashtags, you got to be smart about it. If you are a starter to Instagram, then you definitely shouldn't be using those bigger hashtags. It's okay to use one, but if you're doing three sets, if you're only doing three hashtags, I would completely avoid anything big, anything over 10,000, I probably wouldn't do because there are so many bigger accounts that's just gonna, especially if it's saturated, like if you don't have a niche and you're just doing custom tumblers, once you type in custom tumblers, it's probably gonna be about two point something million. So I would just avoid those broader hashtags and do custom pink tumbler or custom glitter tumbler or like just describing your tumbler. Like this right here, I would say love the 90s tumbler or 90s tumbler. And I, as I niche down with describing this tumbler, I'm going to notice that it's not going to be too many people that's using this hashtags. Is that going to stop me? It's not going to stop me because I'm not thinking in the mind frame of another Tumblr maker. I'm thinking in the mind frame of a customer. A customer is not going to know if these are sublimated. They're not going to type in sublimated 90s Tumblr. Ain't nobody going to type in there because they don't know what that is. They're going to type in a 90s Tumblr. And when they type in a 90s Tumblr, guess who Tumblr going to pop up mine because I use that hashtag 90s Tumblr. So you have to make sure that your audience matches the hashtags that you're using as you continue to grow. So I wouldn't do anything past a million. And I think I have like 20 something thousand followers. I definitely wouldn't even use millions now. Sometimes I do because I just be playing with it. But I would definitely avoid it if you want your content to go somewhere. Seasonal hashtags. Be sure to use those like hashtag Halloween tumblers or hashtag custom Halloween tumblers. Because those tumblers hashtag Christmas in July because those type of things is going to make people want to buy it because it's something that's going on like i wouldn't follow i'm not a trend follower i hop on it sometimes but sometimes it's just like trends can be really expensive and we'll talk about that in a whole nother video but sometimes trends can get real expensive real fast holiday hashtags when you're looking at hashtags on the search page of instagram you definitely want to look at the amount of videos usually it'll say like, let's say hashtag custom tumblers, it'd be like 2.7 million videos or views. I can't remember which one, but it is say whatever it is um, on the side. And if it does, then that should determine which ones you use. If you do 30 hashtags, I will probably stick to the 10 and 15 range because the more hashtags you, you use, yes, you have a chance of your content being pushed, but you also have a chance of it hurting your hashtags. I don't i wouldn't recommend duplicating hashtags because some people do that but then i think a lot of people that duplicate the hashtags they don't remember that they use that hashtag already because they didn't use 30 hashtags so why not let's go ahead and duplicate because i'm thinking off the brain create you about four to five sets of hashtags within your niche or within whatever you think you're going to create and use those hashtags to your benefit the more you use those hashtags the more your stuff gonna it's gonna push out because instagram is gonna know this person creates these type of tumblers now if you're doing you don't have a specific niche and you're just all over the place it's probably gonna be a lot harder for you to grow because the different random hashtags that you use instagram is not really gonna know how to push out your stuff 
So if you're posting seven days worth of glitter tumblers and then you turn around and post seven days worth of bling tumblers and you never integrated those hashtags, then it's kind of going to be like, okay, we don't know what the heck you're creating. You have to be careful with that. Tip number eight. We're on eight, guys. So tip number eight is deciding if you want a professional Instagram profile or if you want a business Instagram profile. Now, the thing about having a business Instagram profile is your analytics. That's going to be one of the key points. I cannot stress it enough. Having analytics. Now, I haven't had a personal account in so long that I can't remember if it gives you analytics, but it doesn't give you the type of analytics that you're going to need in order to succeed as a business um, on Instagram with a professional dashboard. It's going to tell you when to post or the best time to post based off of your audience. It's going to tell you how many people are looking at your your videos. It's going to tell how many, you know, all your demographics, everything, who's seen it from what countries to what cities to what states. It's all going to be there. So I personally recommend business, y'all. Business, business Instagrams have come a long way because before you couldn't use like all the yeah 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 you couldn't use all that. It was strictly elevator music. Um, but now they've gotten so flexible where you can use that and you can sometimes you still can't use, but because of the copyright thing, but. For the most part, you can use a lot of trending sounds and Instagram have their own trending sounds as well, which some are popular, some are not. Some are like those sped up sounds, but I highly recommend a business profile if you are trying to launch your business through Instagram and grow on Instagram. Um, they're also going to be a category section where you could choose what kind of category that you want to be in. I would say, depending on it, if you're trying to sell stuff, shopping and retail is probably going to be the way to go um, because it's going to push your stuff out as a business. So people are going to know that this person is a shopping thing. It's going to give you like different things that you can kind of choose from, like your your links on the bottom. Like if you can email, if you want to send, get a, send a message or whatever the case may be. If you want to be a digital creator, you can do that. However, you got to be careful because that's going to determine the audience that your Instagram is going to, you know, whatever, push it out to. Number nine, you want to make a schedule. The reason why I say making a schedule is because it's going to save you a ton of time and you're not going to get that social media burnout that a lot of people get. Now, if you don't know, there is a video coming about scheduling, how I schedule my videos, how I plan my videos. That way you don't burn out when it comes to, you know, making a schedule or trying to post on the spot. If you're like me, I have a full time job. So eight to 10 hours I'm working. I'm not really thinking about posting on Instagram. So I have to have something that can post on Instagram for me. And I'm not paying nobody to do that for me when I'm capable of doing it myself through an app. There's different apps that you can do this through. You can do Facebook Meta, which is free, um, but you have to have a business Facebook account linked to your business Instagram account. You have to, it, it has to be business um, for it to kind of coexist. You got Later, which we ain't going to talk about too much because I ain't get paid for. We're going to plan. I ain't going to talk about that. They are paid, so you do have to pay for that. And there is Canva. Now with Canva, you do have to have a business profile too. And if you got the pro, it only works with the pro feature. So I have pro because Canva is probably like one of the only things that I really, 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 really pay for when it comes to like small business software because I, Canva I use for everything. YouTube thumbnails, real thumbnails, everything. So therefore I use Canva a lot. So why not pay for it? I mean, it's only $10 a month. Those are... Some of the things you could do to plan. Oh, Instagram. Instagram has its own scheduling piece too. I forgot about that. That I use faithfully to schedule my posts and on the money. Okay, it posts on the money. So you can also just schedule it through Instagram. You just go to your, whenever you're about to upload something, you go to advanced settings, you go to schedule, and you click the time of the time you want to schedule. I would say if you're going to post, 
three times a day you pick those same three times and until you get to a place where you're established and you have at least 500 to a thousand followers i would still stick to posting three times a day every day because some people try to skip it on the weekends but i would still do that on the weekends or at least one one or twice on the weekend because you don't want to mess up the algorithm but for the first 14 days you should be posting three times every day faithfully you should be posting the same exact three times every day for example 9 a.m 3 p.m 6 p.m whatever you want to kind of think when when you're just starting off you kind of want to think about um people yourself what time do you wake up do you get on your phone immediately um your audience if you're trying to reach moms do you think moms is waking up at eight o'clock you know do you think they're looking at their phone at eight o'clock or do you think they're getting their kids ready at eight o'clock or on their way to work at eight o'clock so you have to kind of figure out that based on your assumptions at first until you start getting those analytics from that dashboard stories so with your stories you want to post every one to two hours I am terrible with posting my stories, to be honest. Sometimes I don't even post stories. But stories, once you come out of private mode, they get pushed out so anybody can look at your stories. Weird, but they can. Anybody can see your stories. Um, if you got Facebook, this is not a Facebook tutorial. Um, but if you got Facebook and it's linked to Instagram, whatever you post on Instagram will automatically go to Facebook. Whatever you post in your stories will automatically go to Facebook. Whatever you post on Facebook will automatically go to Instagram. The only thing about what you post on Instagram and Facebook is if you post something on Instagram and it goes viral on Facebook, people kind of got to go back to your Instagram in order to be able to caption on it. Um, so you could choose to integrate those or just post separately. But having a posting schedule is going to be the best and easiest way to keep you from that burnout that a lot of crafters go through, a lot of social media influencers go through, a lot of people go through. And for your stories, you can also use your stories to do polls, Q and A's, vet your audience, vet the people that see your stories. And, you know, so that, that you can see what they want to see from you, what they want to see as far as products, what they want to see as the buyers or as the people that is your audience. You can use it for ask me anything or Q&A's and then boom, you got videos. You got, you got a couple of videos just off of that. You can also post updates on your stories, you know, hey, new product coming soon stay tuned you can promote your reels on your stories because remember stories get pushed out to people that's outside of your audience as well so you do have the benefit of if your reel isn't going anywhere then you can post it on your stories and who knows who see it and can blow your reel up now let's rewind back to when i said about the repurposing the content so when you repurpose the content remember if you're going to post the same video don't post the same sounds don't post the same hashtags use this repurpose to play around with it use a different set of hashtags use a different set of sounds stay away from using things like tiktok and pinterest and twitter and whatever other platforms it is to post on instagram because you have content there because instagram is not going to push out any watermarked platform that's not instagram you also kind of don't want to put your own instagram watermark on your instagram videos because then people know like okay she done posted this before you want to kind of take it out i put below where you can find websites you can find to take out the watermark so that you can have a clean video but definitely play around with those hashtags and the sounds because i have done that multiple times in one video that flopped ended up going crazy one video that went crazy ended up flopping so you just kind of play with it and even if it go crazy still repost it repost it repost it repost it repost it don't repost it the same day don't repost it the same within the same 48 hour period but just you know figure it out and repost it because you just never know somebody might not have seen it that might should have seen it the first time now they can see it again okay before we get into number 10 this is a bon well not really bonus but this is a quick tip. Make sure you get your profile picture set up before you we get to number 10, okay? Like I said, it could be a logo. It could be a picture of you holding your product. It could be you if you're 
a, a makeup person with a brush doing your own makeup. It could be whatever it is, but whatever picture you have, like let's say if, if you look at my Instagram picture for the Tumblr doctor, I have tumblers and I have me and then I have my logo all over it. Still put your logo on your picture so that way people know that you, that's your logo. People can get familiar with your products and know that, hey, that's the Tumblr doctor logo. Hey, you, all your stuff should be the same color, within the same font range like don't confuse people because then people don't know and y'all know people are quick to eat once you become a business you are like an easy target for people to try to copy you especially once you start growing and they make fake profile pictures and if you're one of those businesses that's known for just picking anything then a lot of people aren't going to know what's actually yours versus what's not actually yours number 10 so the number 10 thing is now that you have done all this, your content is ready, your hashtags is ready, you you niche down or you have a niche, you have a business name, your business name start taking, you've got your highlights set up, you got your bio set up, you are ready, okay? You got your sounds written down. Now that you got all this stuff done, it is time to remove the private and put that thing in public, okay? And, and get the going. Now, whenever you do this, I would probably wait maybe two to three hours before I post just so that, you know, Instagram has time to, you know, determine that this is no longer a private profile, but it's a real profile and it's ready to get like, it's no longer private, it's public and it's ready to go. Okay. You're waiting on those 30 days to go away. Go ahead and start working on the next 30 days because that's going to be important. You should always be 30 days ahead versus 30 days behind because then you're going to burn out. If you guys enjoyed this video or like this video, please make sure you comment below, like, subscribe, share, save, and turn on the post notification bell. So that way you can know when I post and I'm going to be doing more content like this. Um, I'm still playing around with my days, but definitely I'm probably going to start posting every Friday consistently. Um, and be sure to check out my other videos and Love you guys. Bye.